Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. With back to school right around the corner, the nationwide teacher shortage is getting worse. Up next, how some districts are adapting to fill vacant positions. Another hot day and another very warm morning. We've got some clouds out there right now, right over downtown, 81 degrees out of San Antonio International Airport. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, August 2nd. Thanks for joining us and happy birthday to you. Thank you very much. Yeah, let's start the day early. Mike's even that. cheering you on. <laughs> I, I'm not a bragger, but uh, I'm going to brag about the folks here at KSAT. It's a wonderful team of folks, and thank you very much. <laughs> yes, yes. Have a great day. Thank you. Mr. Humble on his birthday <laughs> over there. Yours is tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, don't change, humility don't, goes right out the window. Don't change the subject. All right, we hit 102 yesterday. Not quite a record. I don't know if anybody's disappointed about that. And yes, there were. If you're one of the lucky ones to hit one of those showers, most were well off to the east. That was just a a, a glitch, if you will, because there's nothing like that today. We've got, as Mark mentioned, a couple of clouds out there. 82 degrees right now, 83 Canyon Lake. So, yeah, we are up a degree or so compared to yesterday. Some humidity. These numbers here in town are about the same, but uh, Randolph, Stinson, Pleasanton, fog up your glasses when you walk outside. So heat index 86 over there at Randolph, 89 up the road at uh, Canyon Lake and 87 here at the airport. Mold is on the low side and it is a yellow day once again with CPS Energy. Scan the QR code. They've got all sorts of different ways that you can uh, try and conserve during those peak hours of the day late in the afternoon going in toward dinner time. Once again, heat advisories are in effect basically just taking into account those hot, hot temperatures. And then on top of that, wind is going to start to pick up a bit later on this afternoon afternoon going into the early evening hours. So that's prompting a red flag warning from Bear County up I-35 up to 81 and pretty much up uh, 10 into portions of the hill country. So an extremely high fire danger out there, of course, with the very low humidity, those winds and the fact that all the vegetation is just crispy, dry, 94 degrees today at noon and 103 high temperature. That will tie the record. And that's what I'm going to be saying for the next few days. We're going to be up right around record high temperatures, very hot all the way through the weekend. Is there any light at the end of the tunnel? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. A former Judson ISD teacher who was arrested last year for sharing child pornography is facing new charges after a recent arrest. 27-year-old Mark Mallow was arrested again last month after Congress police say he was having inappropriate contact with someone he believed was a 14-year-old boy through social media. Mallow is charged with possession of child pornography, online solicitation of a minor, and violation of bond. Police say Mallow sent explicit photos and set up a time to meet with the person he thought was a child. And when he showed up to the meeting, police arrested him. He was out on bond from a 2022 child pornography arrest. In other news, back to school is coming up fast and the nationwide teacher shortage is getting worse. Some parts of the country are reporting the biggest staff shortages in years. ABC's Andrea Fuji explains why. This morning, with some school districts just days away from welcoming students back to class, many are scrambling to fill vacant teaching positions. We're facing a, an epidemic when it comes to a teacher shortage. More than 40 states are suffering a severe teacher shortage. The reason? Teachers list low pay. A starting salary averages $40,000, burnout from the pandemic, school violence, and lack of respect from students. In Louisiana, Jefferson Parish's public schools have more than 200 teacher vacancies. Los Angeles, more than 450 empty teacher spots. Data shows nearly half of public education employees who left their job last spring resigned. And one in three teachers say they're likely to quit in the next two years. Experts also say teachers are worried. There have been 23 school shootings that resulted in injuries or deaths so far this year, with some schools debating whether teachers should be armed. Safety is automatically, just because of the current climate of our country, at the top of every educator's mind, of every parent's mind, of every administrator's mind, and I think of every student's mind. And if it's not, it should be. To ease the shortage, some districts are now asking athletic coaches, retired teachers, and even school principals to help out in the classroom. Teachers cite another downside to the profession, no remote working options. To combat those drawbacks in recruiting new teachers, some communities are now offering four-day school weeks. Andrea from GE ABC News, New York. The United States gets knocked down a peg by Fitch ratings. This means from Fitch... 
This move from Fitch rather means the U.S.'s default changes from highest credit quality to very high credit quality. Officials at Fitch say the lower grade is due to what it calls a, quote, steady deterioration in standards of governance over the last 20 years. That includes the long debt ceiling battle between President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Senate leader uh, Chuck Schumer blasted House Republicans for the drop in credit rating, saying the GOP's, quote, flirtation with default has negative consequences for the country. It appears studios are ready to start negotiating with Hollywood writers again. The Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers have asked the Writers Guild of America to return to the negotiating table. The producers have requested for a meeting to be scheduled on Friday, and Tuesday was the first time in over three months that the studios have sought to end the standoff between them and the WGA. Writers have been on strike in Hollywood for nearly 100 days. Nobody won the Mega Millions jackpot last night. It means $1.25 billion is up for grabs in this Friday's Mega Millions drawing. No one matched all five numbers plus the Mega Ball last night. However, one person in Burnett, northwest of Austin, managed to win $4 million. The jackpot has been rolling. It was last won back on April 18th. Time now is 436 and 81 degrees for now. Extreme heat taking a toll and many local outdoor businesses on many outdoor businesses. Up next, the changes being made to keep the doors open and customers cool. And a quick look out there with TransGuide. We're looking at I-35 at Fisher Road. It looks like there is still work being done along there, uh, striping and barrier work. And so it looks like this work should wrap up about five this morning, but it's something that you guys should keep your eye on. And outside with live cam, thanks for starting your day with GMSA as we take a live look out towards San Antonio International Airports. We'll be back. 439, almost all of us having a tough time dealing with the heat, so imagine doing business in it. Many local businesses rely on the outdoor seating and service. And they're having to make some changes this summer to battle these temperatures and protect their bottom line. RJ Marcus has more. You walk outside and you can you get punched in the face with this this thick air. The extreme heat is taking a toll and many local outdoor businesses are working on ways to keep up their bottom line. Definitely seen a drop in business. Um, people are still coming out. We're still getting a crowd. They're just coming out later in the day. Taryn Furman owns Elsewhere Garden Bar and Kitchen downtown. He says they have not had to change hours, but with customers not wanting to be outside during the hottest parts of the day, they've adjusted staffing a little bit. We'll cut people if uh, again, if we're not super busy. Um, but uh, thank goodness I haven't, to let, haven't had to let anybody go. And in an effort to keep their customers cool, Taryn says that they have the misty nozzles here ready to go every night. They also have up to 20 fans on the property. Plus, as you can see around me, there's all sorts of shaded seating in the area, all in an effort to make sure that their customers are out of the direct sunlight. Around the corner at the Pearl, people are finding any way to stay cool. Restaurants like Southerly told us off camera they're mostly keeping customers indoors, and there are very few requests for outdoor seating. Between the construction and the heat, downtown is almost a ghost town. And it's much of the same at El Camino. Ricky Ortiz says his food truck park is seeing a steep decline in business. We're down in, in revenue significantly. I mean, somewhere upwards of like 70, 80 percent with all the factors. Ortiz says that he now has to open on some weekdays as late as 6 p.m. to make sure his customers are comfortable enough to enjoy some food and drinks outdoors. Sit in the shade and get in front of a fan and, you know, you can sit out here for an hour or two and, and be fine just as long as you stay hydrated. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. 441, 80 degrees. The beginning of the school year is coming up soon and teachers will soon be juggling all the needs of the students, which can be emotionally and physically draining. Up next, three ways to avoid burnout. And what's next for a, a mother after she was arrested in the Bahamas accused of conspiring to kill her husband? And welcome back. It's 444. A Georgia mother is out on bail after being arrested in the Bahamas, accused of conspiring to kill her husband. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on the alleged murder plot in paradise. I want to thank me. 36-year-old Lindsay Shiver, posting frequently on social media, is out this morning on bail. Investigators say she, along with two other men, allegedly planned to murder her husband of 13 years, Robert Shiver, while on vacation in the Bahamas. Shiver frequently posting glimpses of their family's picture-perfect life on social media, many on vacation in the Bahamas. In 2020, Lindsay writing, the key to a perfect marriage is having two imperfect people who 
refused to give up on each other. The couple met while in college at Auburn University, where Robert played football for the Tigers. And we'll have more on what Shiver could be facing coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. As the new school year approaches, you might be thinking more about the mental well-being of students. And we can't forget about our teachers. Jonathan Cotto shares advice from an expert on how to avoid teacher burnout. Burnout is a thing, and it's within every career, every field. The list of demands placed on teachers is growing. According to the National Educators Association, a recent survey shows teachers are more likely to experience poor well-being than other working adults. 59% of teachers experiencing burnout compared to 48% of adults in other fields. They're having to really perform outside of their typical role as educators. They're having to do a lot more than just teach. Ramos says teachers juggle lesson planning, grading, meetings, all while addressing the diverse needs of the students and says it can be emotionally and physically draining. Therapists are trained how to be able to manage their own personal feelings around some of the things that are disclosed, but I don't necessarily think that teachers are ha have been really prepared for that. She says there are things teachers can do to cope with stress and burnout. First, so doing something that's actually soothing and pleasurable, you know, taking a bath or going for a walk outside. Second, have a support network. Having people that you can go to that you're connected with or that are, you know, local. And third, consider professional help. So you have like your individual help, which is your own coping skills. You have a more community help, which is your family or friends or support groups. And then you have your more macro level help, which is like professional help and, and those who can help you um, in a different way than you've tried. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Quick check of the roads with Transky looking over at I-35 at Fisher Road. There's that closure still. Doing striping and barrier work. Uh, website, TxDOT says, though, should wrap up at 5, but uh, it's very possible that they might try to get more work done and uh, may take a little bit longer past 5 o'clock. Uh, Stephen Clauso says he's keeping an eye on it for you. Yeah, hopefully it'll wrap up before the busy, busy time. Sure hope so. Yeah. Did you get the gift? Huh? Did you get the gift? No. Oh. I didn't. I need I to go back. Stick my and name work. on it if you got a gift for him. So. <laughs> oh, I thought I thought you had a gift for me. Oh no no. no. <laughs> I was like, it's a little early, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, I got you one step. No, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. It is Mark's birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. Austin. <laughs> yes, indeed. You gonna shout out to uh, say Gap Chat or not? Are you gonna yeah. do that? Later. Huh? Later. A little later. bit later on. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, we, what a gorgeous picture. That looks like something out of a out of a movie, I think, or something. Yes, this is the, the day of the full sturgeon moon. And, of course, there's going to be another one before the end of the month. That's going to be the, the blue moon this month. But what a great picture. So many folks sent in some great pictures of the moon. And I'm going to be showing those all morning long. A couple of clouds hanging around here as of right now. All right. We have moved into a tie for fifth place in triple digits temperatures 36 so far this year and I think at the rate things are going yeah by the the weekend we're going to be moving up into fourth place and then continuing on from there whether we rival last year and even uh, 2009 it's going to be a wait and see situation, but as it's looking right now, we're going to be racking them up all the way through next week. 87 is the heat index right now here in town. 89 Canyon Lake and 86 over there at Randolph. Of course, yesterday with this flow, the think of a giant wheel spinning and the center of it's up there to the northwest of us. And we had these little disturbances that moved on in here. And that's why we did have, as expected, some of those uh, stray showers that did pop up here and there. Some folks saw some of those clouds off to the uh, north and east. Didn't see any, nobody sent any pictures of any rain. But yeah, there were a couple of them out there. Um, that's just a, a, a gee whiz from yesterday. Nothing like that today. Uh, it's just going to be the same old hot. We've got uh, clouds this morning, and then we make it up through the 80s very quickly this morning, all the way up to 90 already at 11 o'clock, 94 at noon. And then, yeah, we're going to be topping off later on this afternoon up in the low hundreds once again. Now, as far as the uh, satellite picture, 
current shot. We don't have anything out there uh, in the way of clouds at all, and it's that high, which is sitting pretty much right on top of us. And again, this thing just is not going to be moving at all over the next few days. As a matter of fact, it looks like it wants to kind of kind of scooch in a little bit more, and all that does is just help add another degree around here. So we're going to be hotter going into the weekend. And then as we go on into the uh, first part of next week. Now, again, this picture doesn't really change. The high is going to start to drift off to the west a little bit. Doesn't do anything in the first part of the week, but it looks like by the end of the week, that's going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, far enough off to the west. We may actually, it'll ease temperature slightly and start to get into a northwesterly flow which the hope being there's a you know little disturbance moving on through here again that's not until the latter part of next week so more than a week down the road sheer speculation right now but at least there you know maybe things easing in toward next week cuz until then Nothing's going to be changing. It and again, draws a long breath. <laughs> each, yeah, each and every day is going to be close to the, uh, the record high temperature for that specific date all the way through the weekend into next week. Ooh, 104. Yep. Okay. We'll brace for that as well. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 451, 80 degrees. Up next, we may finally know the greatest acoustic guitar song of all time. Plus, Haunted Mansion director Justin Simon talks about the development of the movie's core characters. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, zero, five, three, Fireball one. Daily four numbers, two, four, one, two, Fireball one. Cash five, seven, 23, 35, excuse me. Sorry, seven, 23, 25, 33, 34. And now your Mega Millions. Eight, 24, 30, 45, 61, Mega Ball 12, Mega Plier four. Good luck. A Haunted Mansion star talks about one of the characters' development. Plus, what is the greatest acoustic guitar song of all time? For the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. These ghosts definitely don't want to leave. The movie Haunted Mansion isn't just about funny ghoulish ghosts in a haunted house. It's also about vulnerability. Specifically, the vulnerability of the character played by Lakeith Stanfield dealing with the grief of his dead wife. Director Justin Simeon tells me to see a vulnerable, grieving black man on screen like that. I felt like that was really radical. I, and Lakeith felt that was really radical. It's a black man feeling his feelings, but it's also a black man extending a hand to a younger black man and being a father figure that it kind of feels like you know, the character that, that Lakeith plays probably never had. Disney's Haunted Mansion is in theaters now. Disney's the parent company of ABC News. Several new shows to watch today, including the start of the final season of FX and Hulu's critically acclaimed comedy Reservation Dogs. Two episodes out today. On Apple TV Plus, it's the third and final season of Rose Byrne's dramedy Physical. What's the greatest acoustic guitar song of all time? Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven, at least according to a recent poll by Total Guitar, which acknowledges that only about half of the song is acoustic, the rest is electric. But the rest of the top three aren't totally acoustic either. Pink Floyd's Wish You Were Here in second, and the Eagles' Hotel California in third. And happy birthday to Charlie XCX. The Grammy-nominated singer is 31 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC. ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now is 455 and 80 degrees for now. Donald Trump now facing a third indictment. Up next, what's next for the former president and his presidential campaign for 2024? Plus, the San Antonio water system considering a change to its watering rules. What would happen to customers who do not follow them? And Stephen is in the studio right now. This is one of the eye, uh, things we've had our eye on this morning in this first half hour of the morning show. 35 and Fisher Road. We'll talk to him coming up on the other side of this commercial break. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. Former President Trump now indicted. What charges he's facing and what his lawyer is saying now. The details coming up. And looking out there with a live cam, we are 80 degrees. It's actually not too bad. However, if you step out, you know, from some cold AC, you're like, wow, what a, what a difference. Wow, what a difference. Good morning, <laughs> yeah. everybody. It is Wednesday, August 2nd. Thanks for joining us today. We hope you had a good week so far. Uh, it's been hot, and even when the sun's not out, it's a little warm. Very, very warm in the afternoon hours. Uh, we'll take 80 right now, Mike Osterhage, and uh, you're kind of pursing your lips like, mm, I got to say uh, yeah, this. I mean, that. yeah, 80 is better than 102 like yesterday or 103 today, but still, I mean, we're not cooling down that much, even in the, uh, the overnight hours. We do have some humidity, uh, 
uh, the usual, the, the morning humidity out there. 81 right now. Uh, 86 is the heat index based on that dew point, which did actually go up one little notch here in the past hour. We've got a few clouds hanging around here. Like I said 103. For high temperature today, that's going to tie today's record. 102 was the, uh, the temperature yesterday, not quite up to the record. But again, I don't think anybody's going to complain about that. Uh, the aquifer went down another big chunk, down eight tenths of a foot yesterday's reading. And of course, mold is on the low side. We do have some of those heat index readings around here right now. So there is a little bit better amount of humidity. And that seems to have been the case the past few mornings around Canyon Lake, down around Stinson, 85. The uh, heat index right there, 87 up around Canyon Lake. And we do have heat advisories once again, pretty much the same outline as what we had yesterday. The excessive heat warnings up there around Austin and further up to the northeast. And this is till nine o'clock. But then on top of this, of course, we do have the red flag warnings from San Antonio up I-35 going up 281 and 10. And that's the northern portion of the hill country right there because the wind is going to start to pick up somewhat later on today. And of course, vegetation on the ground. I don't know if there's anything green out there anymore. And it's not in my yard. Warm and humid this morning. And then 103 sunny and again, a little bit breezy. That 103 will tie today's record and low hundreds, more records tied or set throughout the rest of the week. And then going into the weekend and next week, it's going to be even hotter by about a degree or so. Is there anything that looks like an end to this heat wave? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Mr. Cavazos, good morning, sir. What's going on? Hey, Mike, I think we have better news over here at 35. Here at Fish Road, we saw plenty of flashing lights early this morning. We know that there's been striping and barrier work taking place in the area, and crews actually uh, had some delays yesterday. We saw a big slowdown there that was taking place probably around 9. Now, it does look like we still may have some out there, but uh, the situation is a lot better than what we saw as we went to commercial break. Again, those crews have been out there overnight working to improve the roadways that led to at least two lanes being blocked, which caused some slowdowns. And we're seeing a little a bit of that still reflected along our map at 35 northbound right as you approach Fisher Road. I'll speak to Trans Guide about this to see if those crews have actually wrapped up so, because we know a lot of people will make that commute as they get their morning roll in here. Taking a drive back here to town, we did have a vehicle fire reported at 410 northbound at Gulebda Road. It's cleared out and I wasn't really too worried about that. Uh, but as we give you a wide look at the map, there's not really a lot to worry about here either. You see that we still have plenty of construction and you see that red icon right there. That's still the usual road closure we've had at 35 southbound at Brooklyn Avenue. So be on the lookout for that. But as we take you to our travel times, it's still going to be a pleasant drive along 37 northbound. Pleasanton, uh, we can expect 30 minutes at this hour. And right now, US 90 eastbound should be about a 30 minute commute if you're heading in from Castorville this early. Now that arrival from Lytle went up to 20 minutes. Usually we see about 16 to 17 minutes at this hour. So could just be that crews are still out there working to wrap things up, so just be on the lookout. But from this shot at Transguide, it looks like this portion may be done. So I'll get on the phone with them over there and find out exactly what's taking place. But we'll keep a close eye on things, and I'll have more updates to other closures coming up a little bit later on. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. Recently, some who have tried to pay respects to their loved ones' graves have come across vandalism. John Paul Barajas takes us to City Cemetery Number 3 and speaks to people whose family members are buried there. Sliced in half pushed over, broken, and crosses ripped off. No matter where you look, there's a damaged headstone at City Cemetery Number 3 on the east side. Well, these are supposed to be our loved family members and trying to see this happen, this desecration. Ruben Lozano says he came to pay his respects to his great-grandfather a week ago, expecting to see this as he did three months ago, but instead found the headstone toppled over. He says, oh my gosh, look, yeah, it just kind of tugs at your heart. Lozano often visits the cemetery to reminisce and remember his family's history. His great-grandfather was buried here in 1916, more than a century ago. I showed a photo of this to my mom. She's 92, and she didn't start crying, but she was close to it. Now his family wants to know why someone would cause this damage and how they were able to do it. Knock something like this over, either have to have several strong guys to do this or a vehicle with a strap or something to pull it over. By the look of it, whoever did this took their time going through the entire cemetery. And going forward, Lozano is hoping for a more secure gate and has this message to those responsible. Come on, guys, have a little respect. I don't think they'd like it if we'd go into their house and start knocking their crap over. 
Now, Lozano did file a police report last night, so SAPD is now aware, and we contacted city officials as well as submitted pictures of the damages, so they are also looking into the issue. As for who's going to have to foot the bill, that's still not clear yet, but city officials also want to recommend any residents that see something like this to call 311 so they can be made aware as soon as possible. At City Hall, John Paul Barajas, KSA 12 News. A Bandera County man on probation for aggravated assault is now charged with two murders. Michael Novak in a Bandera County jail facing a $1 million bond. Bandera County Sheriff officials are tight-lipped about the investigation. However, neighbors who live across the street from the home on 8700 Wharton Dock Road say that Novak was living in that home with his mother and her boyfriend. The two had not been seen in a few days, which was strange according to neighbors. Memorial has been started for the couple who investigators have not yet identified. They were just real good people. Yeah, if you needed good. something, you could go and ask them if they had it, they'd help or they'd you know, help you with anything. State records show Novak has a criminal history, which includes drug possession. People working for the Bear County Sheriff's Office are getting pay raises. The raise goes into effect immediately. The average pay raise would be 9%. Sheriff Javier Salazar says this decision allows the department to be competitive when it comes to recruitment and also strict in the standards it's expecting. Starting salary patrol deputy goes from 58 grand to 61,000. Detention officers would go from making $41,900 a year to even 45,000. The Deputy Sheriff's Association of Bear County did make some compromises. It's giving up a 2.5% raise in the next two years. That was a part of the collective bargaining agreement. Donald Trump now indicted and accused of trying to subvert, subvert rather, the results of the 2020 election. Prosecutors are accusing the former president of spreading lies about election fraud. ABC's M. Wynn tells us why the former president still thinks he will win against Biden in the next election. Former President Donald Trump criminally charged in relation to alleged widespread efforts to overturn his 2020 election loss to now President Joe Biden. Trump indicted on four federal felony charges, conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding, obstruction of and an attempt to obstruct an official proceeding and conspiracy against rights. The attack on our nation's capital on January 6th, 2021 was an unprecedented assault on the seat of American democracy. It was fueled by lies. Lies by the defendant targeted at obstructing a bedrock function of the U.S. government. The indictment accuses Trump and six co-conspirators of creating fraudulent slates of electors in seven states. Those co-conspirators have not been charged and are not named in the indictment. What's very extraordinary about this indictment is that it offers a very very sweeping view of what led to January 6th. Former Vice President Pence, who's running against Trump for the 2024 GOP nomination, condemning his former boss, saying anyone who puts himself over the Constitution should never be president. Prosecutors also accused Trump of trying to compel the Justice Department to conduct sham investigations into election crimes and of sending his supporters to the Capitol to obstruct the certification proceeding. We're going to walk down to the Capitol, and we fight. The former president reacting, calling these charges ridiculous, telling ABC News he believes he will still defeat Biden. We will relitigate every single issue in the 2020 election in the context of this litigation. Judge Tanya Chutkin, who will oversee this case, has already given out some of the toughest sentences against January 6 riders. Trump is set to appear in court tomorrow on these new charges. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Just about 509, 80 degrees. Up next, when Amazon plans to roll out its virtual health clinic service nationwide. San Antonio Water System considering a change to its watering rules. Up next, how it plans to go after customers who do not follow the rules. And looking out there with a live cam, not so much a break from the heat. We're at 80 degrees, but we have a break from the sun right now. It's 5.09 and we'll be right back. 5.12 using too much water, watering on the wrong day. 
Well, the San Antonio water system is considering a change to its watering rules and how it goes after customers who do not follow the rules. And right now, those who violate the watering rules can receive a municipal court citation. Saad says it was handed out more than 3,000 citations since the beginning of the year. But as Mayor Ron Nirenberg explained during our case at Q&A at 6 o'clock yesterday, Saad could replace citations for a new charge on your bill. One of those significant changes being, let's not go through a criminal process. Let's not go put it on the course. Let's talk about it as a fine that could just go on the SAW's bill uh, for the 10 percent or folks or even less that actually go through this. It would be a much more efficient way of reminding folks about our need to conserve water, and it would be an easier way for everyone to handle the situation. SAW says that change could make things easier for customers who do not live in the city of San Antonio. It is still collecting public input and its board is expected to vote on proposed changes within six to eight months. A change would also require city council approval. It's now 513 and 80 degrees. The Switch has been, has been Nintendo's main console for years and up next when its next generation game system should be released. Plus, we'll show you how much a vintage Apple computer signed by company co-founder Steve Wozniak is being sold for at auction. Chevy Silverado has what it takes to do it all. With up to 13 camera views and the Z71 off-road package. Okay. Yeah. Any truck can help you make a living. This one helps you build a life. Chevy Silverado. Want luxury hair repair that doesn't cost $50? Pantene's Pro Vitamin Formula repairs hair as well as the leading luxury bonding treatment for softness and resilience without the price tag. If you know, you know it's Pantene. Sweet pillows of softness. This is soft. Holy Charmin. Excuse me. Roll it back, everybody. Charmin Ultra Soft is so cushiony soft, you'll want more. But it's so absorbent, you can use less. Enjoy the go with Charmin. Just about 517, Amazon rolling out its virtual health clinic service nationwide. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Amazon Clinic is launching nationwide. The virtual health service allows users to connect with healthcare providers to treat common conditions like migraines and sinus infections. After filling out a questionnaire, customers can communicate over video or text message. Nintendo's next generation gaming console could be released next year. Reports say it could feature a less expensive LCD. Nintendo Switch sales have been suffering a drop off, but the console is still the third best-selling gaming console of all time. And finally, a vintage Apple computer is on the auction block. The Apple One, the brand that launched the tech giant, is signed by co-founder Steve Wozniak. The computer was bought back in 1980 in Massachusetts. It's expected to sell for about $200,000. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. 517. Let's say good morning, Stephen Cavazos. Happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you have good, good dinner plans tonight. I do. I'm That's exciting. A place oh, I haven't yeah. been before oh, up well, on the far north side. Yeah, lots to celebrate. Just and you know what? We have a lot to celebrate in the traffic department, too, because that closure we saw along 35 yeah. looks like it's cleared out. But if you remember it yesterday, crews were out there for quite a while, and it led to big backups on the southwest side. Uh, but as we get a look around town, we're not spotting any backups at this time. There's 410 at Old Pearsall. Uh, looks like a busier commute in that area of town. But 35 at Topper Wine, we have some shots of some of the construction taking place out there. And really, that has been the story over the last few mornings. We've had plenty of that work taking place in and around the Alamo City. Uh, but just be on the lookout. We're going to continue to keep a close eye on this. I actually plan on talking to text out a little bit later this morning. I'll bring up this uh, particular stretch of roadway along 35 northbound. And remember, it was where we saw a big stretch of cars that were pretty much back to back yesterday. So looks like this portion has wrapped up, but I'll get more details for you and bring you those updates a little bit later on. Taking a drive back into town, don't forget we have the closure here at 35 southbound. It's at the upper level. Exit to Brooklyn Avenue is still blocked off. This is following a fire that occurred over a month ago that caused some damage damage to the drainage system built underneath the bridge. So we'll find out exactly how long it will take to reopen. But uh, at this time, we know that there's no estimated time. Giving you a wide look now at our map at 517. We are seeing, yeah, 
plenty more construction taking place. Don't forget, I want to keep this, uh, make sure that as we get closer to the weekend, you're aware of the North Expansion Project here along Loop 1604. We will have another full weekend closure, guys. This time, it's going to happen on Friday, August 4th and take us to Monday, August 7th. It's 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning, and we will see the westbound main lane full closure from the Kyle Seal Parkway exit ramp to Bandera Road entrance ramp. And again, full weekend closure, which means we will still see those barriers in place. We'll have more on that coming up a little bit later on this week, but uh, you can scan this QR code, takes you directly to our KSAT traffic page, gives you all the knows about what you can expect before you have to go. Mike. You know, underneath that uh, Brooklyn yeah. exit ramp, mm -hmm. I was on the access road yesterday driving underneath there, and it doesn't look like there's anything going on. Yeah. That's so, yeah, and, and that's the thing. You know, we got to find out what's going on with TechStop because we know that there's still no time when they're going to reopen it. Hmm. And they haven't gotten back to you. They have. Oh. We're waiting to hear back. Ah, All right. okay. we're waiting to get a little bit more information, I should say. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Full sturgeon moon today. Absolutely gorgeous. A lot of folks had their cameras fired up yesterday, and we've got. It, it's great to see the different views that people get of the moon and different filters, things like that, at different times. And it's just absolutely beautiful out there. We can continue to show those this morning. So we got some clouds hanging around over there at uh, 10 at 4:10, kind of like uh, yesterday morning. This is not a an encouraging map. Potential rainfall over the next seven days. Well, the desert southwest, okay, but nothing in and around here. And the reason for that is if you kind of sit right on top of us and superimpose that high parked right over the panhandle, and that thing is not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. It's like a dome on top of us, and that prevents any of these showers from popping up. Of course, yesterday it was, we had a, just a little bit of that flow coming around the clockwise rotation. That's what brought in that little disturbance to produce some of those uh, showers and a couple of thunderstorms well off to the east. And that was the the exception, obviously, rather than the rule. Now, this thing will stay in place all the way through the weekend, and it is going to strengthen slightly. So temperatures may go up another degree or so in the next couple of days. And then we go into the latter part of next week. It is going to be sliding off to the west a little bit more. So therefore, the hope being that we start to see a bit of an overall pattern change. If that's off to the west, we get this uh, more of a northwesterly flow in the atmosphere, and that would then help out or at least give us the opportunity for something to try and slide on in here. But again, that's still a week and a half away, so nothing written in stone. We're at 86 right now when you factor in the humidity, 85 Stinson, 88 up the road, Canyon Lake. Throughout the rest of the morning, a couple of clouds hanging around here, and we'll make it up through the 80s, already up to 90 at 11, at 94 at noon. Of course, the normal high temperature, this is now the start of the hottest time of the year historically, with the normal high being 97, but also the normal low is at 76 degrees, and that's for about the next week to uh, 10 days. And... Just add to that by another six degrees above normal 103 and that's going to tie the record today. Satellite picture around here. Obviously nothing showing up and this kind of uh, it, it matches that that rainfall potential map where you've got nothing on top of us and everything just being pushed all around the uh, top of that big area of high pressure sitting on top of us. So that's why not getting anything as far as any rain around here. Once again, triple digit temperatures across the board. We actually will go up a degree or so as we head in toward the weekend. First part of next week, individual records each day are definitely going to be in jeopardy hmm. that way. Breaking records, but not the way we want to. <laughs> nope. Thank you, Mike. 523, 80 degrees. Up next, why Seth McFarlane is giving $1 million to an entertainment community fund and a first look at Elf and Concert that's coming up this Christmas. Here are all your lottery numbers. Pick 3053 Fireball 1. Daily 4 numbers 2412 Fireball 1. Cash 5, 7, 23, 25, 33, 34. And your Mega Millions, 8, 24, 30, 45, 61. Mega Ball 12, Mega Flyer 4. Good luck. Plenty of people in Hollywood feeling the pinch of the double strike against studios and streaming services. And those with the means are stepping up to do what they can. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. 
Seth MacFarlane, the actor, because he's a neurotic mess. But. Seth MacFarlane is pitching in to help his fellow actors. He's donated $1 million to the Entertainment Community Fund, formerly known as the Actors Fund, to help striking film and television workers. He's one of more than 7,500 donors who've kicked in more than $6.3 million since early May. According to a fund press release, it's currently distributing $400 to $500,000 a week in response to requests for emergency financial assistance. The SAG after strike is in its third week. The Writers Guild strike is entering its fourth month. Santa's coming to town! Get ready for Elf in Concert. The modern Christmas classic is hitting 31 cities across North America. They've made a list and checked it twice, where local orchestras will perform John Debney's score as the film is projected on a 40-foot screen. The Yuletide cheer begins November 17th in San Jose, California. Locations and more info at elfinconcert.com. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 80 degrees. And there are some doubt about U.S. debt. Its rating was just dropped to AA+. Plus. Why the Treasury Secretary is criticizing the downgrade. Plus how artificial intelligence or AI is being used to better detect breast cancer in patients. And ahead on GMSA at 6, summer travel can be exciting and stressful, especially with younger children. We're going to have some ways that can make things easier for them and yourself. Fitch Ratings has downgraded its U.S. debt rating from the highest AAA rating to AA+. Just ahead, what that means for everyday Americans and their budgets. Let's look out there with live Kim. No surprises today. We're still at 80 degrees this morning, but... You know, we're hoping for relief maybe in a couple of weeks at least. <laughs> <laughs> November. Good morning, everybody. November. It is Wednesday, August 2nd. Thanks for joining us and happy birthday to thank you. Happy birthday. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. birthday. Oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> Already getting some wow. messages from viewers too. Thank you in advance. Great. Yes. It's a party here. It is. We have a party on GMSA. Who is supposed to get the cake? The cake oh, is right there. You're going to have yeah. to start staring yeah. at him pretty soon, though. Are we? Yes. You're the of baritone. Course. You uh, Mike, anyway, I'm a, I'm a bass too. Okay, well, <laughs> what, you got the deep voice. <laughs> Just start humming in the background there. So, all right, we got a few clouds hanging around here this morning, and we are starting off on the above normal side. We are in the historically hottest time of the year right now 97, 76, the normal high and low, respectively. And uh, yeah, we're five above that right now. Dew points at 73, so there's a fair amount of humidity out there that will be dropping down later on this afternoon. Heat index 88, Canyon Lake 85, Stinson. And of course, we do have the heat advisories in effect for most of the area, the eastern two thirds of our area. And just because they're not issued out there to the west, a little bit different criteria. Still, obviously, it's going to be very, very hot. And then also uh, something a little bit different and really got to take serious the fire danger is extremely high. Red flag warnings going to affect this afternoon through 9 o'clock tonight for San Antonio up I-35, 281, and then going up I-10 into portions of the hill country. So that because this wind is going to start to pick up a little bit later on this afternoon, anything, any outdoor burning, you have to be extremely careful. I know yesterday we were watching as there was a traffic backup early in the morning. Cars were cutting across the grassy median. No, because that the tin, the Vegetation is just tindered out there, so you got to really be careful. We're going to work our way up through the 80s this morning, 94 at noon, plenty of sunshine, and a high temperature today up to 103. That will tie today's record. And again, you're going to be seeing a lot of numbers that look like that and even a bit warmer going into the weekend. We'll take a look way down the road, see if anything's going to be changing coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. All quiet on the uh, the roadways this morning? You know, it's quiet, Mike, but we still have those closures. Here's the one that we've had our eyes on for over a month. Of course, this is 35 southbound. This is a shot at St. Mary's, but where we see that area blocked off, it's there at Brooklyn Avenue. And remember, this has been over a month, folks, that we've seen those barriers out there. We are working to find out exactly when that will reopen. I've been in contact with TechStop, but at this time, we know that there is no estimated time when we will see these lanes reopen. Just be on the lookout for that. We know that could impact your drive time as you get your commute rolling, but we take you to our map and we're not spotting any issues here. It's just going to be pretty much a quiet start for a lot of folks that have to head out the door in the next few minutes. If your destination is the Alamo City, quick look at these travel times. I-10 westbound, Seguin, still pretty green, 31 minutes at this hour. 33 if you're traveling along 80 
57 northbound heading in from Lavernia and for our friends down in Floresville should be about a 30 minute commute. Not too bad. Let's get one last look here at the closure at 35 southbound at St. Mary's. More closures on the way. I'll tell you where coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Natalie, breaking news. A man's in the hospital after being shot inside his home in the woods of Chavano neighborhood. It happened in the 1400 block of Rocky Pine Woods in a neighborhood off of Days of Alla Road. Our Sarah Costa is live at the scene and Sarah, police say that children were inside the home during the shooting. Good morning, Mark and Steph. Yes, four children were inside the home when that shooting took place. Ages three, five, six and eight years old. They are safe. They are not injured. They were in a separate room when that shooting took place. They are detained by police right now and will soon be taken to CPS. I want to show you the scene right behind me. Here's what we know so far. Very preliminary information, according to police. So shortly after 4 a.m., police were called to this home, the 1400 block of Rocky Pine Woods for a shooting. They say a woman called 911 saying someone had been shot. When they arrived, they found a 37 year old man inside this house with a gunshot wound to his lower abdomen. He has been been transported to University Hospital. He is in stable condition at this time. His wife is being detained by police for questioning along with those four children. Like we said earlier, three ages three, five, six and eight. They are safe. They were not in that room when the shooting took place. So at this time, police are saying they're not saying if this is a domestic dispute or domestic violence because both the husband and wife are not cooperating with police, giving limited information at this time. There were a couple of guns found in the home, according to the sergeant on scene. Police are saying they're still trying to locate exactly which gun was used in the shooting. Just stay with us on air and online as this investigation continues throughout the morning and we get more of those details. Live on the north side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. The United States gets knocked down a big peg by Fitch ratings. And that could cause reverberations across the country. And the CNN's John Lawrence reports it could affect everything from the mortgage rates Americans pay on their homes to contracts carried out all across the world. Apparently, there's some doubt about U.S. debt. Fitch Ratings downrated its U.S. debt rating on Tuesday from the highest AAA rating to AA+. This move from Fitch means the U.S.'s default changes from highest credit quality to very high credit quality. Officials at Fitch say the lower grade is due to what it calls, quote, a steady deterioration in standards of governance over the last 20 years, including the long-standing but eventually resolved debt ceiling battle between President Joe Biden and House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Fitch also said the U.S. government, quote, lacks a medium-term fiscal framework unlike most peers and has a complex budgeting process. The Biden White House issued a statement saying it disagrees with Fitch's decision, saying it, quote, defies reality. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen criticized the downgrade, calling it, quote, arbitrary and based on outdated data, while former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers called the move from Fitch, quote, bizarre and inept. In 2011, S&P dropped the U.S. debt to a double A plus rating, which was the first time the U.S. lost its perfect credit rating. That grade hasn't changed since then. Moody's, the third major credit rating agency, still has the U.S. with a AAA rating. I'm John Lawrence reporting. In Bastrop County, Texas, evacuations were put in place while crews battled a large brush fire that sparked yesterday afternoon. According to the A&M Forest Service, the fire is about 100 acres in size and is about 50 percent contained as of this morning. The extreme temperatures and dry pine trees in the area have fire officials issuing warnings to people living in that area. Artificial intelligence is detecting more breast cancers in doctors with years of training and experience. That's according to a new early stage study just published in the journal, The Lancet Oncology. Researchers looked at scans from more than 80,000 women in Sweden who underwent a mammogram between April of 2021 and July of 2022. A group whose scans were assisted by AI found 20% more cancers than the group without AI assistance. But this doesn't mean your hospital will let a computer determine whether you have cancer anytime soon. The authors say there is still a lot more research to do. Since no one won Mega Millions last night, Krispy Kreme is trying to give everyone a sweet consolation prize. It says every lottery player can still win some dough, 
All you have to bring in is a Mega Millions ticket from last night's drawing to a Krispy Kreme location through today. In return, you get a free original glazed donut while supplies last. That is sweet consolation. Yeah, there's something there. If you kept your ticket, right? <laughs> yeah, most of them are like in the, the trash. Ticket, uh, trash this morning. Aw, let's <laughs> go looking for it for a free donut. Right? Time now is 539 and 80 degrees. I am not beneath that. <laughs> Up next, while the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is investigating two Tesla models for complaints about steering. Plus, there's some good news if you have a Regal Cinema near you. Right outside with live cam, taking a look, waiting for the sun to come up. So those clouds are starting to bake, break up over San Antonio. You're watching GMSA. And welcome back. It's 542 in your morning consumer headlines. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is investigating two Tesla models for complaints about steering. So 12 drivers have said new Model 3 sedans and Model Y SUVs have suddenly lost power steering assistance. In seven of those cases, that just meant steering became more difficult. However, five of the complaints say it resulted in a complete inability to steer. The NHTSA says it's aware of one crash connected, connected to that issue. The agency has been investigating the Model Y since March for separate reports of the steering wheel detaching. Regal Cinemas has emerged from bankruptcy. We have four of those theaters here in San Antonio. Its parent company, Cine World, says it's cut $4.5 billion worth of debt, raised $800 million in new equity capital, and secured financing for nearly $2 billion. The world's second largest theater chain filed for bankruptcy protection last September. However, blockbuster hits like this summer's Barbie and Oppenheimer are helping to turn things around. There is still uncertainty amid the Hollywood actors and writer's strike. Well, it's good to see things getting a little better in the movie department. Yeah. Time now, 543 and 79 degrees for now. Up next, Animal Defense League here with this adorable Aww. pooch that <laughs> is telling Mike, hey, give me some space. Aww. <laughs> And looking out there with Trans Guy looking over at Loop 1604 at Marwa Grove where things are moving at this hour. But we're going to check all the roadways with our Stephen Cavazos very soon. Well, Nadia is here from the Animal Defense League, and this has to be one of the prettiest dogs anybody has ever brought in here. Who is this boy? So this is Ren. He's a two-year-old Siberian Husky, and as you can tell, just super loving and kind. Oh, yeah, and I don't know if you can see those, literally ice blue eyes. This is where they get the, the name ice blue, I think, looking at this guy's <laughs> eyes, and he has got that thick Husky coat. He's going to take a lot of brushing in this hot weather because he sheds quite a bit, but oh my gosh, what a gorgeous, gorgeous animal. And look, he's, I mean, he's, for being two years old, he's really, really well behaved too. Super well behaved, does great on a leash. Um, it seems like he's potty trained because when I got him out of his kennel today, he went and did his yeah. business and yeah, he seems like a good boy. Okay, when, and when he came in, and this is one of the biggest problems around here, he wasn't neutered, was he? He wasn't. And typically, did you know this, that 70% of the pets Probably in San Antonio, at least the, seven, the percentage that come to our vaccination clinics, 70% mm -hmm. of them are not spayed or neutered. So it's really important. It, it, it prevents them from getting lost. It prevents them from marking your house. So it's really important that you get And it helps because there's so much of a stray population in town, dogs as well as cats, Correct. that you're, I mean, you're just helping out. And it doesn't, it, they don't have to go through a cycle period. The females don't. Um, it, it's actually better form to be neutered or spayed, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. So for a male, like I said, it prevents them from marking. Um, it's easier to train, a lot easier to get their attention to. And, and again, uh, it's just what we recommend. Of course, talk to your vet and they'll give you the best recommendation. Okay. And vaccination, vaccination clinic coming yes, up too, Yes. The right? vaccination clinic is going to be at Highland Park District, District 3 on August 5th from okay. 9 to 11. And look, he even poses right there. Well, if you'd like more information about adopting this boy, sweet as can be, the vaccination clinic or spaying and neutering, head on over to the Animal Defense League, 1100 Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center, uh, over there across from the zoo, PetSmart, or ADLTexas.org. Thank you, dear. Those are the kinds of dogs I've seen on social media. They get a kiddie pool and they mm -hmm. fill it full of ice to uh, the brim 
and they won't get out of the pool. <laughs> they just love that. It's like, this is my happy spot. This is my happy yeah. spot. It's genetics, right? Yeah, we can relate. <laughs> 549. Let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Hey, well, hopefully uh, drivers over here are finding their happy place out on the road because uh, you can take a look at 281 at 410 right by the airport. Things have been moving along just fine. For the most part, we had some closures out that were reported a little bit earlier that were slowing folks down. But as we see the commute picking up there along US 90 at Medio Creek, that's always normal. We can expect to see some of that congestion creep in as we get closer to the morning rush. Don't forget, we also have that closure at 35 southbound at Brooklyn Avenue. But taking you to our map, it's going to be the same story, at least for now. A lot of construction to look forward to this week. And don't forget, if you're traveling along 281 a little bit later this morning, you'll see some paving work. Actually, uh, that that should wrap up on Saturday, August 5th. This starts at 9 in the morning and should finish, fingers crossed, at 3 in the afternoon. This work began on Monday, but we know there's plenty of work happening along 281. In the meantime, we'll see alternating lane closures on the frontage road in both directions at Bulverde Road. But right now, the roads here on Transguide are showing a pretty easy commute. Again, for the most part, 37 at Jones Avenue. North and south bound lanes don't look too bad. Uh, 35 at Burbank looks like it could be getting busier, but that's always expected. Uh, 10 minutes till 6. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, you know how they call baseball the boys of summer? Mm -hmm. uh, the Astros are celebrating big time this morning. Yeah. Pitcher Framber Valdez threw a no-hitter last night. Oh, really? Only the third this year, the 16th in Astros history with wow. a 2 nothing win over the Cleveland Guardians. Congrats. Yeah, and then on top of that, Verlander's coming back. Yeah, just hours after we yeah. find out Justin Verlander's coming back to Houston, Framber goes out and throw a no-no. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. No, yeah no. I didn't I didn't know about the no-hitter thing. I, I thought you were talking about yeah. the Justin Verlander. It was a big deal. day for the Astros. Because he just went to the Mets last offseason, I think. I believe it was last year. Just gone a year. And the Mets are having a fire sale now. They were they're, they are. they're dumping everybody. They but, are. Well, the fire sale. The fire sale. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean they're two ace pitchers, Verlander and the other guy. They dealt them off. Scher so. like Scherzer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Uh beautiful picture. We were talking about the full moon, and this is from Mr. McClellan out there at Woodlawn Lake, and wow, just absolutely gorgeous picture. So beautiful, especially as that's coming up when you get, you know, that that orangey glow to the uh, the moon and the skyline there. All the way from the moon, all the way over to the Tower of the Americas. Great shot. Thank you so much for the KSAC Connect picture. And again, so many folks send in pictures of the moon. They're gorgeous. Got a couple of more over the next uh, hour to show you. Some clouds hanging around here right now. Traffic over there, 10, 4, 10, moving along very well. So we're in second place, tied for second place with the most triple digit temperatures to date. Of course, last year we ended up getting 58. So we didn't have, we only had six more after today. And then we're still going to be racking them up. So we are going to definitely take over second place as we go. And this is as of, I beg your pardon, this is as of yesterday. I didn't change that date up there. But then when you look at the most triple digit temperatures, we're still down in fifth place. In 2011, we had a lot, but a lot of those came in the latter portion of August and even the first part of September. And yeah, so we're going to definitely be moving up on both of those counts here. When you look at the uh, the next seven days, 103 is the next couple of days, 104 is all the way through the weekend and going into the first part of next week and low temperatures pretty much going to be just very steady, but a couple of notches above normal. This is the, historically the hottest time of the year. Of course, uh, normal low being 76 degrees. 85 is what it feels like out there at the airport. Stints in 86 at Canyon Lake and throughout the rest of today. Again, we move up through the 80s very quickly this morning once that sun comes out, and then we are going to make it up to, again, 103 later on today. And one more look at if you, if you didn't get enough of those triple digits, that other graphic, same thing, different form, 103. And each and every day, we are going to be right near or setting, tying or setting the record high temperatures for these specific dates. It's like shopping online. You actually put too many items in your cart. You over ordered on the heat, Mike. I know. Let's cut so, back a little bit. That's a very good <laughs> analogy. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't go back and delete I these know. from the, the shopping you list. So remove from your cart. Yeah, we've already, it's been ordered and it's on its way. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. 554, 79 degrees. So you're winning a lot of numbers. Pick three, zero, five, three, fireball one. Daily four two four one two fireball one cash five seven twenty three twenty five thirty three thirty four no one won mega so it's up to one point two five billion dollars eight twenty four thirty forty five sixty one mega ball twelve mega flyer four.
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we're following the story that you've been covering. Former President Donald Trump indicted on felony charges for trying to overturn the 2020 election. The former president is due in court tomorrow. We're going to tell you what's next and what it means for the 2024 race. We've got team coverage. Also, an inspiring small business big impact story. A Texas restaurant owner with a mission to help young people at risk. We're going to have those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead in our next hour, GMSA, a man in Bandera County who was out on probation is now facing murder charges. The latest in the case and what neighbors are saying. And the new school year is coming up fast. How teachers are working to avoid burnout through the next nine months or so. And if burnout wasn't enough, schools across the U.S. dealing with teacher shortages. What districts are doing to ease pressure before the new year even starts. And checking traffic right now, the sun is slowly coming up over 35 and St. Mary's will be back.